Hello and welcome to this quick little lecture. Um, this one's going to cover hypothesis testing and the placement of the critical values. So the purpose here is is that a key part of understanding hypothesis testing is really understanding the placement and the importance of that critical value. Um, correctly calculating the critical value requires that you know if the test is a one-tailed test or if it's a two-tailed test. One-tailed tests have the alternative hypothesis mu is greater than some stated value or mu is less than some stated value. For a two-tailed test, the alternative hypothesis is mu is not equal to. And those are the only options. Of course, it also requires knowing the value of alpha. Um, so these slides show the placement of the critical value uh, as it relates to the, hypo uh, the alternative hypothesis. So let's go through these and I'll keep talking. Here's the a typical distribution. Um, this could be a normal distribution, it could be a t-distribution, it could be any other distribution that's symmetric, bell-shaped, unimodal, etc. Uh, doesn't matter. We do know, and it's guaranteed, that the area underneath, or the shaded area here, is equal to 1. Now one of the key things about probability is that areas equal probability. So anytime you've got a probability function such as this, and you shade in an area, that shaded area is going to correspond to some sort of probability. Here, since the entire thing is shaded, since the area of that entire thing is 1, the probability of observing anything within there is a 1. So let's start with the one-tailed test. This is going to be mu is greater than some stated value. And again, mu naught is just a stated value. That could be 0, that could be 15, that could be 12.1. Notice that this is the alternative, h sub 1. It's mu is greater than. That tells me that the critical value is going to be greater than that mu naught. Now, the placement of that critical value greater than the mu naught depends upon your stated alpha. Alpha is the probability of wrongly rejecting the null hypothesis. We state that, that we want that alpha to be whatever the problem states or whatever life tells you in most of my work that alpha is equal to 0 0.05 but what that means is that critical value is placed somewhere horizontally so that, that shaded area above the critical value is equal to alpha alpha is a probability on this graphic it's also an area Another option is the null hypothesis mu is greater than some stated value. This also is a one-tailed. Since mu is less than mu naught, I went the wrong way. Since mu is less than mu naught, there's a critical value that's going to be less than the mu naught. How far less? Less enough that the area to the left of that critical value has an, ha, is equal to alpha. So if alpha is 0 0.10, then that critical value is going to be placed there so the shaded area has v is of, of size 0 0.10. If alpha is 0 0.01, then that critical value is going to be a little bit further to the left to correspond to an, a shaded area of 0 0.01. Now for the two-tailed test. The alternative mu is not equal to mu naught. Since it's not equal to, we're going to have critical values above and below. How far above and be below? Well, so that the shaded area above and below is equal to that alpha value. And that means we're going to split the alpha between that above and below. So we've got alpha over 2 above, alpha over 2 below. Those are the areas, those are the probabilities that we look for in our tables. So for instance, if we've got a two-tailed t-test and we specify alpha equals 0 0.10 and it's two-tailed, then we go to our t-tables and look for alpha divided by 2 along the top because it's two-sided. And that two sides affects the area, the placement of those critical values. If, however, we have a one-sided test or a one-tailed test and the and the alpha is 0 0.10, we're going to look in our t-tables for the column of 0 0.10. Okay. 
that's that's where the two comes from or that's where the two is 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 used it's in dividing the alpha in order to determine the area in the t-tables or the z-tables if you're using z-tables so I hope that quick little lecture was helpful um, take care of yourself enjoy <laughs>